How's it going? Dave from Comic Book Investments. So, gonna do something a little different. Uh, I talked with the people over at Cover Price, and they gave me a suggestion on what they thought I could do a video on, and I thought it was pretty good. Basically, every week they come out with a week in review, and it goes through a bunch of different comics, uh, rumors, maybe comics you should buy because rumors are coming out, ones that are going up, ones are going down, all sorts of stuff. There's tons of different comics on here. It's different from their top 10. Their top 10 is like what's currently selling by units sold. This one is more, I guess, almost speculation with shakers and movers included in it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back because I can go back since, you know, they started this thing and I'm going to go back and see how they do over time. So if you see right here, we got a week in review, November 13th, 2020. So that is literally a year ago from today. Well, today is the 14th. But so I'm going to go through. I'm going to see how these did. Let's see how good they are picking. All right. First up, we got Batman Beyond number one. All right, so let's look at Batman Beyond number one. I'm just going to do nine eights. I'm not going to go through every single grade, but here we go. All right, let's look at what it sells for on average now. Average price twenty three fifty. If we go back a year ago, it was sixteen twenty five. I already did these calculations, so my math is correct. Uh, that is a forty five percent gain in a year. So that one worked out. All right, moving on. Canto number one. I have a lot of these. I kind of spec on it pretty hard. Um, but let's look at Canto number one. All right, it sells for currently $650, and a year ago it was selling for average uh, $637. So that's a 2% gain. Not much, but if you can see in here, it's been jumping up and down, right? There's just not that many sales of it. I'm pretty sure once this actually does come out as an animated film, then it'll be through the roof. But right now, it's just kind of just floating around, right? But that's the risk, right? It's speculating that it could jump up. All right, so not bad. It, it stayed its value. Okay, let's move on to number the next one. All right, we got Creatures of, of the ID. All right, so let's look at this. And a 9-8. Well, not that many sales, right? Some of these are hard to find. But let's see, it sells for about five fifty. And if we go back a year ago, right here, Average was 843. That is minus 35%. Now I'm going with averages. I'm not going peaks and lows and stuff like that, just solely averages. So that one did not work out. Uh, next, we got DC Comps Presents 47. This is the first appearance of the Masters of the Universe, He Man, and all that stuff in DC Comics. And obviously, it has a show out right now. All right, let's see how it's doing right now. It's averaging about $2,020, and a year ago, it averaged $1,460. So that is up 38%. So worked out. All right, what do we have up? Next, we got The Fighting Five. This is the first appearance of Peacemaker. This came out, uh, so this list is a year old. So the movie was obviously, I believe the trailer had dropped by now. Because I think the movie came out in like August. So this would have been last November. It might have had a trailer or at least like pictures or something. So, all right, let's look at Peacemaker. Peacemaker, I had to go down to an 8.5 because it just don't sell that often. So I tried to go most recent stuff. All right, we're looking at about 26.40. And a year ago, close to a year ago, is 2,900. That is minus 9%. So I still think this is an okay book in general. I mean, it's still looks like it's going up so it's just hard because when they're so rare and they're not many sales it just kind of they can go high or low it's just not enough data all right next ooh this is a thorn in my side i had a bunch of these and uh yeah they kind of dropped all right so marvel previews 95 this is kind of predates ultimate fallout 4 and especially since this was like just given to like comic shops to like you know, promote their new upcoming Marvel stuff, kind of give them like a preview of what's going on. A lot of people didn't really think of it as a comic, so they didn't really take care of it. So there's a lot less out there, especially in nice shape. Our right, Marvel previews, 9.8, there hasn't been one in a while. But if we look at a 9.6, we're looking at sold for 26 or 27.60. And a year ago, we're looking at 3,700. 
So that's a drop of 28%. And it's kind of, yeah, just not really doing all that well. All right, what do we got? Marvel Originville. Cool cover. <laughs> Can't lie. Um, all right, let's see. I've, where am I? All right. Now it sells for about $265. And a year ago, it was averaging $383. So that is down 31%. So that one did not work out. All right, Max, the glow in the dark variant. We got it selling for roughly about $430. And then a year ago, it was selling for $160. That is a 73% increase. So that one worked out pretty well. All right, this one's crazy. This was a pretty hard to find. I'm not going to lie. I've been looking for these, and I only, I only have two. And you know how I'm a big speculator, you know, Big speculation on uh, Nintendo comics. I've said it a million times. I have like 50 Super Mario Brothers number ones. This ridiculous amounts. But this one is definitely very hard to find. Yeah, look, it only has 30 copies on the census. But this was back then. So let's see how it's doing. All right, 9 8 recently sold for 8 grand. And about a year ago, exactly, sold for 2300 that is a 248% increase. Now let's look at some of the, it's, it's a, see, it's pretty rare. It doesn't pop up that often. You know, most recent sales is six, uh, 7 0, sold for 650. And then a year ago, there is not a year ago, uh, two years ago, it sold for 200. So yeah. All right. Spawn 227. This is an homage cover to um, Spider Man 300. This is the variant edition. All right, sold for two grand recently, and a year ago, we can find one, eleven hundred. So that is where is my was eleven hundred? I put down eight fifty for some reason. I must have put the wrong one. Uh, let's see, eleven hundred. Eighty-two percent increase on that one had to do a little math real quick all right then we got clone wars this was a limited to only a thousand copies i've actually had about two three copies of this one um i've, I've, I've since sold them i think the highest grade i got was a nine six of this one but let's see how this one's doing all right recently sold for twelve thousand five hundred man and a year ago sold for four grand so that was up 213%. That's, you know, when they're super rare and people want them, you know, there's only 1,000 copies that are made. That's it. doesn't mean there's 1,000 that exist. It could be way less than that. People throw them away. You know, who knows what happened to them. They get destroyed. All right. Star Wars Clone Wars Defenders of the Lost Temple. This is the first appearance of the Black Saber. You can kind of see it on the cover. By the way, if you haven't seen this book, I was surprised when I got this. I didn't know. It's small. It's like, like this big. Not very big at all. Uh, so yeah, let's look at this one. I couldn't find anything more recent than an, an 8.5. So it sold for 315 recently and a year ago it sold for 332. So down 5%, not really. And if you watch the Mandalorian, you know that the villain has the dark saber. That's why that one's so crazy. All right, next more Star Wars stuff. Oh boy. Uh, Star Wars Knights of Old Republic number three. 9 8 is going to run you about $205. And a year ago, it was $350. Mm, down 41%. Um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic number 9. Let's see. I put number 1 by mistake. All right. I've have, had a bunch of these. Okay. What are we looking at? 1300 currently. Let's see where it was a year ago. 992. Let me put this in. 992. 1300. All right, up 31%. So that one worked out. All right, next we got the ultimatum. This is ultimatum number one, but this is the David Finch 1 in 100 uh, variant. So let's see how this one's doing. 
All right, it's, it's, it's downtrending, but it's recently sold for 625 a year ago. It's about a year ago, 850. So this has gone down quite a bit. It's gone down 26%. Mm, not good. All right, next we got the last Ronin obscurity variant. Now, this one I cannot price. The reason why I can't show it is because most of these were drawn on by different artists and things like that. And whenever you have something drawn by different artists, it instantly changes the value. Because depending, like imagine if Jim Lee drew turtles on this versus, I don't know, me, right? No one cares about me. It's not going to go for very much compared to Jim Lee. So each one of these that I've sold is going to be extremely different value because of the fact that it has a different artist on it. But this was kind of cool. So it was limited to 450 copies. Uh, 425 are numbered, 25 unnumbered. Usually they have a little extra in case things get ruined or destroyed, misprint stuff. 71, comp uh, 71 of them were damaged during shipping and were not replaced, resulting in only 397 near mint possible copies. But this was, you know, invite only uh, by the owner of turtles.com. Uh, so, yeah. And they were numbered in agreement not to resell. Come on. People are going to resell. All right. TMNT, uh, number 30. These are were very low print run. They're only rumored to be about 500 copies, which were made. And these were actually uh, Peter Laird, after he signed his agreement to sell the turtles to Nickelodeon, Viacom, I believe. In his contract, he said that... He, he was able to, I think the last six issues of this comic book, he said he wanted to finish the story. And so they said, okay. And a lot of these later issues were mail in only. So you'd have to mail away from and get them. So yeah, they're only 500. So let's look at what it's doing. All right. You know, we got kind of a recent sale at 770. A year ago is 780. It hasn't really moved at all. There's just look, there's like no no sales data. These don't come up that often. Like I said, there's only maybe 500 exists that, that were made. That means a lot of them could get thrown away and who knows what happens to get destroyed. So it's minus 1%, but yeah. All right, we got Vampirella 2. Now, a lot of times Vampirella 1, way out of people's price range. So this one was on this list for that reason. And I'm looking at a 9.2 recently sold for 430. And if we go back a year, right here, we're looking at 312. Right, three, let's see, this was from nine to nine. So nine to nine, uh, 265, we're looking at 56% drop right there. All right, next we got Wolverine 88. This is the deluxe edition. And that's Deadpool stabbing him. But yeah, what we got? We got recently sale of 488. Let's go back to about a year ago. And we're looking at about 385. That is up 62%. Now we got this Wolverine 145. This is an air cover. And the problem with air covers, there's not that many. And you can't really, they don't come up. It's not like they're coming up every day for sale, like something like Spider-Man 300. So there's no, there's no recent sales of this in any grade. So yeah, it's this, you know, this, a raw copy sold for 1,625 bids, a 9.6 copy sold in 2019 for 10K. I tried bidding on one of these. I did not get it. All right, and these are just rumored in option comics. And I want to go through this and see whatever happened with them. Still nothing. Disney Plus just came out with their Disney Plus outline. Nothing on Darkhawk. So who knows? Once again, these rumors may not go true. I haven't heard anything on uh, Darkwing Duck. The only thing I heard of, he was in the DuckTales, which I watched. I love Darkwing Duck. But I haven't seen anything on a series about him. So, um, And then we got you know the first appearance of Vigilante and... He's supposed to be in the Peacemaker TV show, which I know is coming out. So that kind of, I guess, came true. This one is they're expecting her to show up in Thor 4 or Guardians 3. But 
once again, rumor. And the last one, this is the key of the week. Now, if you guys remember my previous videos, I spec'd a lot on this and I have a ton. They're all off to CGC, so when they drop the first trailer, stuff like that, and hype goes, I'll have a bunch to sell. All right, let's look at this one. All right, so a 9.8 recently sold for 16.50, and let's go back a year ago. We're looking at about 600, so that is up 175%. But if you look at here, super hype, super, super hype, and then like kind of going down. But once something happens, some trailers and stuff drop, it'll go back up again, I'm pretty sure. And remember, like this is a from a year to year, and the biggest boom happened in you know spring, early summer. So that's what these big booms are. But still, over a year, most of these made money. Let's see how many actually made money versus didn't. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of nineteen. So a little over half made their money. But if you added them all up percentage-wise, uh, you know, average is about 46% positive. You know, we have some really big ones, right? You know, at the Nintendo Comics. You know, this one up here. This was, but this is so rare. You know, this was another big one. This was another big one. But overall, not bad. Over 50% of them made money. So, all right, well, have a good weekend.